All right, hey, what's up guys? So I'm over here getting ready to texture. We're gonna texture and Matt over here is gonna be setting everything up since this is his home. He's a homeowner. If you're a homeowner, you can go to Home Depot, rent one of these bad boys, and uh, we'll go through how to set it up and try to spray your own house. This is Matt. He's hey. a recovering alcoholic. <laughs> Uh, this, this is Matt. He's my good friend from high school. So we'll be out helping him out, spraying his house. Um, let's get set up and shoot this bad boy. So first off, you're going to want to mix all-purpose joint compound. It says ready mix, but that's how it looks. So you still have to add water, especially if you're going to run the smaller rig. For this video, we're going to run the RTX. 1250 Graco So you're gonna to want to go with all-purpose in a nutshell mainly because it has more adhesive That's what makes it heavier than The plus three when you're coating your home. You're gonna to want to use the plus three Here in Hawaii. We only have sheetrock. So we don't have a variety of other brands only USG so plus three is for coating since it's lighter sanding and we use the all-purpose for texturing stringing and any type of uh, other finishes that requires the compound to have more adhesive Anyways, you're gonna want to put it in your bucket Once it's in your bucket, you're gonna want to mix it a little bit before adding water I'm gonna have Matt over there demonstrate. Okay Matt, go for it Okay, once it's mixed, you're gonna wanna add some water. What we did here was we got a regular uh, mat. So we use about seven of those, Matt. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's two, pour the whole thing in, mix. So that's good, Matt, you don't need to add any more water. So we ended up only using four because the bottom part of this mug was already pre-mixed. But if it's straight out of the box, it usually takes six to seven of those depending but you're gonna want this type of consistency where it just it it just drips nice and wet. Um, that way you don't make the machine work too hard and you get a nice orange peel. So we're gonna set up the rig now. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do, Matt, is connect the hose. The fatter diameter one is for the mud. The skinnier one is gonna be for the air supply. And these type of rigs have the, the pump and air all in one. So that's what makes them so handy, especially for houses these size. Like the little engine that could. So make it nice and tight. Good? Good. Okay, and I'll stand it back upright. Okay, you're going to want to connect the gun now. I already... It, a good thing to do is oil the trigger. I already put oil on it for you, but so you're gonna want to oil the trigger so it's a nice, nice and smooth. Uh, if you don't oil it and you just use it nice and uh, dry and raw, sometimes the rod breaks. So it's always good to lubricate everything. And then we already changed the the um, I call it a nipple, but I think it's called a nozzle. Nozzle. We already changed the diameter uh, for orange peel. So if you're going to go with a heavier finish, it's going to be a bigger hole and you're going to want your mud to be a little bit thicker. So it all depends on what kind of finish you're going for. But today we're going for a light orange peel. So Matt, the gun, you get the other side of the hose. And the air goes into the bottom of the gun. And you just screw. Okay, tight, perfect. And first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, like I said, lubricate. So you're gonna to wanna to add some water, maybe a quarter, quarter of the, no, uh, dump about a quarter worth of the hopper size. This is a hopper, so you're gonna maybe like fill it up to one quarter. Okay, there. And now we're gonna to wanna to plug in the machine and prime it. 
that's going to help lubricate the holes and everything, especially if it haven't been used in a while. So when you run the mud, everything just glides nice and smooth. So you're going to want to spray that mud back into the water. Here on the side of your rig, if you have this model, there's going to be a gauge. We're going to pump it all the way up because that's what I do. And we're going to turn it on. If you have a sprayer or hopper, you want it to be on sprayer. The knob broke, so it's always on sprayer on mine. You turn it on. Yeah, it's gonna leak a little bit because it's water, but once the mud goes in, once the mud goes in, but you always want to make sure you don't run the machine too much without any material. As soon as the water stops, you, you turn it off right away. Okay, so Matt, now you're gonna get what we mix and dump it in there. Whole thing? Yep, whole thing. So this hopper is gonna, you want it to be a nice blend. It's supposed to go out easy and you don't want to scrape any of the side walls. Whatever is in the bucket you leave because the side is hard mud. So you want it to be consistent like that. And then you don't have to scrape it to mix. You can just add another bucket and mix but never scrape the side walls unless you're gonna mix it and then pour it in. But okay, so now we're gonna turn the machine on. You're gonna run it in the bucket of water until mud comes out okay. and then and then we're good to go turn it on We purged it from all the water. All we have is nice and smooth mud. We're gonna take it to the room and Matt, you're gonna practice on one of your closets. Okay. So we're leaving the machine out here because what you wanna do is you wanna go into the furthest corner and work your way out. That way you don't run the risk of touching any of the walls and screwing up your finished surface. So there's more than enough holes for Matt to start in there. Matt, you're going to want to unravel this spaghetti first. That way it goes nice and smooth. Since you're going to be going weaving in and out of the rooms, you want your line to be nice and uncurled. I feel like we could actually move this ring a little bit further out. But Matt did a pretty good job masking off everything. Um, this, is, this used to be a single wall home. We hung drywall and now we're gonna finish it. Okay. So after you turn the rig, we're not turning it on now because you're not gonna be able to hear me. But you wanna, you're gonna wanna play with the air. This is the air gauge. This is closed. This is fully open. I like to put it about three quarters of the way. And I already have my material dialed all the way in. So what you're gonna wanna do is, I don't press it all the way because if I do, you're gonna get just huge splats on the wall. So I hold it about a quarter. So is that the only thing you adjust? The this is the only thing you adjust, and then, and then the rest is just in how So if you pull you it down more, what happens? Just more mud comes out? You're going to get more... In, so... Oh, is it the width of the string? In here, you see that? Yeah. And it's holding up against this. So the further out, the more mud you're allowing to get pushed through there. Mm -hmm. So if you press it all the way down, you're going to get more mud, and you're you're going to get bigger sizes but we're going for a light orange peel so i like to just hold it about a quarter some guys like to hold it down and then you can just lock it in place if you're going to do that then you're going to want to play with this adjustment so it only brings it down about a quarter but oh, you can stop it yeah i'm just going to hold it like this yeah just because that's i like to i like to play around with the trigger while i'm spraying you get a little bit more tired but i feel like you get a little bit more control over the consistency in certain areas. 
you're going to want to stay about a foot away from your surface area. So you don't want to get too close and you don't want to be too far. If you are going to spray like this, you want as far away as you are from here, you want it to be similar to the ceiling. And that's how you're going to get consistent dots in your texture. If you go close here and then super far here, here's going to be really mushy and big and over here is just going to be a mist. So you want to stay around the same distance, whether you're doing walls or ceiling. The tricky part is when you're in tight areas like this closet. So for tight areas like this, man, you're going to want to shoot on the ground first to purge the machine of any pressurized material so it doesn't throw on your finished circuit. Shoot on the ground first and then fast, go up, just hold it. Boom. And then when you get to a wall, once you have a little bit more to work with, you're going to see a pattern. The spray size is going to be about, maybe about, I want to say about 10 inches as far as the spray goes. You're going to want to go up, down, so you're going to follow a pattern where if the last spray down that I'm seeing is over here, I'm going to want to go right next to it when I come back down. So you don't overlap? Or? So you can overlap, but you don't want to overlap too much because then you're going to be heavy in the middle yeah. and light on the side. So just like an inch or yeah. something? Yeah, so about an inch because the you'll see right now when I turn it on, when you spray it, the heavier is going to be concentrated yeah, in the yeah. middle. Yeah. Um, it's not like painting where you get that consistent fan. You're going to get most of it in the middle and then some mist on the sides. So you kind of want to gauge it as you spray. You want to try to be as uniform as possible. Once you go up and down, you can follow through by going side to side. On a small mm. area, you just do it fast. Don't, yeah. you don't want to stay in one spot too long because the longer you stay in that spot, yeah. the more mud you're going to get. It'll so, build up. Nice fluid movements. Up, down, up, down, up, down, side to side. So that's one way. The other way is circles. So you're just kind of constantly moving your wrist. Same, hmm. not stagnant, but you're going to follow the same pattern where it's up, down, side to side, but it's going to be more random. Is circles better for tight spaces or is so there, circle, does it matter? It, it depends on what you feel comfortable with, Matt. So if you feel like you're not getting that consistent, then you want it to be more random because texture is random. It's not, you know, it's yeah. imperfect. It, you want it to be as uniform as possible, yeah. but you want it to spread out. You don't want it to look machined because yeah. it's going to look weird. So right? how do you usually do straight lines when you do it? So when I'm on tight ceilings like this, I'll do circles. This one I'll just follow through once, circle, and then I'll only, I'll only switch back to regular mm. on the walls because I have a decent enough space. Yeah. But if it's small, so I'll shoot the, I'll shoot the closet for you, Matt. It's okay to once you get to this bottom part just hold it like this because mm -hmm. nobody sprays like this yeah unless you're doing auto body you know but you know go parallel as much as you can and then just you don't have to keep it just yeah you know 
as parallel as possible. Okay, so you're gonna practice in the other closet. I'm gonna go set up over there, and then that way you can keep masking, and I can just go to town on this bad boy. Well, you don't have to watch out the just real fast. Start on the ground and go up. So, oh yeah, that's not even at all. So, the the hard thing about texture, like anything, even taping, is repetition is gonna make perfect. So you're gonna get some heavy building up. Like you saw how it built up there. Yeah. And then you're good here, and then you got. So wherever you hold it for like a second too long, yeah, you're gonna get that build. And, and I was the trigger was not. I was yeah. Holding the trigger the same the entire time. Either. Yeah. It was, so it's kind of loose. So it's just practice makes perfect. You see how it's a little heavy here. Yeah. And we call those holidays because uh, texture went on vacation. So it's just repetition. The only way you're gonna get good at it is practice. Yeah. But that's, that's probably the hardest but, to do is this little area around. Yeah. Like so the wall is easier. but it's not bad. Like if you're just trying to do your own house and you're good with you know some heaviness here and there, then. Yeah. Then so you know, if it's bad. Can you wipe it down? And yeah, so if you wanted to fix that, we could wipe it down with the sponge, let it set a little bit, and then spray over it. Uh, since Matt tends to be a little bit OCD, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to spray this house <laughs> and then let him just keep masking. But go ahead. If, if you're a regular homeowner and you want a sample, just go right ahead. Okay, guys, I gotta get back to work because Matt, okay. Yeah, I'm not paying you for nothing. Yeah, right. You're not even paying me, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm not paying you. This is all free labor because Matt is my high school buddy. And I love him. Oh. Okay. So So corners and field is when you're mixing, you're not going to be perfect at it right off the bat. So Matt, watch out the walls. Yeah. The second batch that he did was way too wet. So the good thing about having a rig with the material gauge is you're going to be able to control the flow, and you'll see what I mean by the flow once I turn it on. indicator of whether or not your mix is the same so your first bucket you're going to want to turn off the air just press this and get a gauge as to how how far it shoots out and if it's consistent it's a nice stream so you want it to be about six to seven inch stream for an orange peel because you don't want it to be you don't want it to be too much pressure for where you don't have any, mm. any time at all to kind of control so it. So when it's more watery, it shoots out Yeah, straighter. so the, the, the looser the mud is, the faster it shoots out, the less, the less material flow you need. So if you do run into a wet batch and you notice that you're just, it's spraying way too fast for you to get a nice even uh, finish, then you're gonna wanna dial it back 
until the stream is similar to what it started with. So that's what this is for. But so you make it less or? Less. Yeah, so you're going to want a six to seven inch stream nice and consistent throughout every bucket that you mix if you're questioning whether or not it's the same just turn off your air and look at the stream if you're getting a lot of hiccups that means that you're not mixing it thoroughly it's not smooth there's a lot of um, unmixed material inside that's getting stuck in the wheels inside so it's catching some air another thing you want to do is always keep the hopper Full. Don't ever run it all the way down because you're going to get air pockets and it's going to start to burk out mud and you're going to get an inconsistent finish. Once you get the hang of it, this is super quick. Yeah. We haven't even been here for an hour and I'm already in the living room. Yeah, we're almost done. <laughs> Matt just needs to hurry up and mask out the shower and we're done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Brandon over here is the best. He just dropped off the Mirko. <laughs> How you been, bro? Yeah. Thanks, man. Wow, you're getting skinnier, bro. I'm trying, bro. Are you, are you like, training? Uh, just working out, you know. Uh, so all I'm the happy. single ladies, this is uh, Brandon Shimmer-Williams. <laughs> Shout me out, man. Shout me out. That's it. <laughs>